Hey there and welcome to the Dumb Leaders Podcast. This is episode 100 of the Dumb Leaders Podcast and today I'm doing something just a little bit differently. We're not going to talk about dumb leaders. We're not going to talk about bad leaders, poor leaders, leadership lessons, dumb leaders in the news. I I think we've had more than our fill over the last year of dumb leadership. So what I do want to talk about today is just some of those qualities, some helpful hints, some helpful tips that you can take on board to become the best leader that you can honestly be. So, And I do this because it's really important for people to be aware of the traits of good, strong leadership and to develop confidence and competence in some of these traits. So whether you're a humble leader, a quiet leader, an outrageous leader, a visionary leader, you each and every leadership type style needs these tips. Now the first one, honesty. Now honesty is a crucial element of great leadership. And one of the main core reasons for that is that leaders must be trustworthy. Yes, I know I can point to so many finger point to so many leaders who haven't been trustworthy. But for a great leader, you need to be trustworthy. You need to be trustworthy and honest. And it is only when people see that in you will they follow you and allow you allow themselves to trust you as a leader. So trust is a critical aspect of being a great leader. And it's all, well, not all, but the majority of trust is going to come from your actions and from being honest. Uh, Characteristic number two, all good leaders must be focused on the future. So they must be visionary. So not focused all the time on the future. I might just throw that in. But we need to have a focus on what the future looks like. You have to know what good looks like, not just now, but in the future. A great leader once talked to me always about being ahead of the game. Tony, you've got to be ahead of the game. You've got to see things before the competitors. You've got to see things before other leaders in your your position. You have to be ahead of the game so for a great leader and a great leadership tip you've got to learn to be future orientated you've got to learn to be visionary now resilience is something that gets talked about more and more these days especially through the the heartache and the pain that we have seen through COVID and being tenacious is a real leadership quality it's highly regarded in so many people If things go wrong, people look for the resilient leader to step forward, remain calm and give those around him or her confidence in getting on with putting their head down and getting on with it. Whenever there's an obstacle, we look for a leader that's got resilience, that's got persistence, that's tenacious because they're going to find a way that they can get around the particular obstacle or the roadblock. And believe me when I say your persistence, your resilience, your tenacity will inspire and motivate others to be the same. Now, good, great leaders need to be clear communicators, uh, especially when you're going to speak for your team. There is a real need for you to be prepared. There is a real need to understand some of the um, questions or Um, responses that you're going to get during those conversations. So when you prepare for those communications, those crucial conversations, those tough conversations, those fierce conversations, whichever methodology you uh, subscribe to, preparation is always part of it. What's going to happen? What's going to be the contingency? How is that person going to respond? How is that person going to react and you do the preparation. If they're going to get emotional, what's the process that you're going to follow to bring them back into safety? What we call safety in a conversation. Because if we don't have safety in conversations, conversations don't happen. 
And right around at the moment, right around the world at the moment, we need to be having more conversations, and we need to be having more safe conversations. So a great leader is a clear communicator who prepares well. Now, one thing that isn't often spoken about when it comes to leadership is the ability to be decisive. And often that is exactly what your followers or your team are looking for, someone to make a decision. Now, often it's actually not the decision. It's you know, people get caught up in decision making because they're looking to get more facts, they're looking to get all more data, they're looking to be clear around what the decision is that they're going to make. But often, people just want a decision. And one of my mentors, John Maxwell, says it's about making a decision and then managing that decision. So even if the decision you make very quickly proves itself to be wrong. The ability to shift and to, and to be agile and manage that decision is the greatest strength. But while you're waiting to make a decision, your team and your staff are waiting to get stuff done. And that's not good. A leader has great clarity in their own mind. So they know what their personal goals are. They know what their team's goals are. They've also got great clarity around the vision around the organization and what the guy, what the organization is attempting to achieve. So they've got great clarity, they can communicate that, and they've got this great line of sight between their own actions and the organization's success. So once again, that is just a, one of the key components for your own individual self-leadership. If you can create that alignment, you are going to be a much more motivated a much more effective leader than others that don't, that are ambiguous, uh, confused um, in relation to what it is they're attempting to do on a daily basis. Now, one of my favorites is that leaders have to be great listeners. So a leader has to be a great listener. And they're always listening to understand. They're not listening to reply. They're not listening to force their opinion onto others. They're not just sitting back waiting their turn. They're listening to understand. The great Stephen Covey said, first we, we seek to understand and then be understood. And that's what great leaders do. They listen to understand. And they put themselves, and with that comes a level of empathy that they're going to understand more about what it is that their people are saying. Um, And uh, once again, it's just a crucial tip for you to be the best leader that you can be. Now, I've combined the next two. We've got open mind. We've got growth mindset. So an open mind allows you to be non-judgmental. And once again, Once you have your own judgment on something, it is likely that that bias will continue to inflate or or, or, um, make your decisions or less clear or ambiguous. So you need to be approaching anything, most things, with an open mind. You need to be very clear to be trying to get both sides of the argument or more than both sides to any sort of an argument or any sort of decision and then coming to help you come up with the best decision that you can. The other area that I talked about, growth mindset, it's all about that ability to believe, that belief that we can be better, that we can all be better at what it is that we do. We're not fixed. We're not fixed people with skill sets that uh, that don't get better. We can all get better better even at those those things that we're incredibly strong about those those things that we're incredibly good about we can always get better and a person with a growth mindset has that mindset that they can get better so that's once again just one of those key things an open mind and a growth mindset now the last comment that i'm going to make the last skill that i'm going to talk about is a great leaders are coachable Great leaders are coachable. You may have heard the term ask whole. So ask whole. An ask whole offers or asks for advice, but never takes it, never puts it into place, never puts it into action. So 
and what they do by that, what they what that indicates or what is then perceived by that is that their way is the better way or they believe that their way is the better way. Coachable people ask for advice. They blend that in with what they believe to be best. And if the advice is the best way to go, they take it. And if they think that they can add some, some, some su substance to that advice by gelling in and blending in their own thoughts, they do that as well. But don't be an asshole. Be coachable. Be able to ask for advice, accept advice, and action advice. So they're the... Th <laughs> I don't even know how many numbers that was. Eight, or <laughs> eight great tips there. Great tips to help you... Be the best leader that you possibly can. It's been a bit of a journey for the Dumb Leaders podcast. We finally made it to 100 episodes. Um, the Dumb Leaders podcast still has a great future. The Dumb Leaders handbook, unfortunately, we closed that down. It was just a distraction on where we are heading with our podcasts, both with the Today's Leader podcast and the Dumb Leaders podcast. They both work in synergy together. They both designed to help you be a better leader and they're here for you. So happy 100 episodes to all our listeners, our loyal listeners. We do appreciate. Please share, like, subscribe, do whatever it is that you do to help us get found to more people that will find benefit in the Dumb Leaders podcast. So as we leave today i'm just going to go through those points again so great leaders take on great tips so a great leader is honest they've got vision they're resilient they're a clear communicator they're decisive they have clarity of mind clarity of thought they're great listeners they have an open mind and a growth mindset and they're coachable it's, to it's Coach Curl, it's Tony Coach Curl here for the 100th episode of the Dumb Leaders podcast. We shall see you next week. Bye for now.